Hello, this is Steve Hogarth, and you're watching Morrow.com. Running around. But if you look really good. I'm not really sure when it started. Um, Richard um, came, uh, sent me an email about two years ago asking if uh, I fancied making an album with him. And um, I said yes, of course. And um, he began to send me MP3s, stereo MP3s of, of instrumental things that he'd created, which uh, I really, really loved. And um, I burnt them to CDs and uh, I used to drive around playing them in the car. But I didn't have any time to develop any of the ideas because I was just I was too busy writing and touring with Marillion. We we haven't really stopped uh, much uh, for the last two and a half years or so, um, and um, we took a month off last August um, to take a holiday, and, and and I set up a little studio in the top room of my house and. Uh, decided I would spend that month um, bringing this this album into being. So um, I loaded up his instrumentals into a sequencer and um, plugged a microphone in and began exploring the possibilities of, of what I could hang on these instrumentals. And it all went really well. I, um, I found it very easy to work with Richard's music. I found, found there was a, a very easy chemistry there and that everything I seemed to try, almost no matter how radical, seemed, seemed to work and feel relevant. Uh, so I, I made a rough mix and e emailed it back to him at, you know, with my fingers crossed, hoping that he liked it and, and he really liked it. And so it went from there, really. Um, the only time we got together was to exchange a few files. And, uh, and then when we came to record drums, we recorded some drums at the racket club. So that was the first time we were actually in a creative space together to record drums and to record um, Danny Thompson's double bass. The rest of the time... He was in London, and I was in the Midlands, where I live. And uh, we didn't actually create in the same room at all. I haven't played on this album, apart from one Hammond Dulcimer overdub. It's all Richard's music. So it's his music, it's my words and my voice, and that's that. The line is in one of the songs, in, in, in Your Beautiful Face, uh, which is a song about a, a woman I knew many years ago who was very beautiful, but also very uh, power-hungry and ambitious and controlling. Uh, and I saw, I saw her daughter last year somewhere, and... Um, was shocked because her daughter now has inherited her beauty. And the, the beauty of the mother, of course, has faded somewhat in later life. And the power has been transferred from the mother to the daughter. But her, she's a much softer, sweeter person, the daughter. And so I was saying in the song, I guess it's not the weapon that does the damage but in whose hands it rests. The world's a safer place without your beautiful face. And the title of the album comes from those lines. I remember your beautiful face. Richard wanted to do that. He just thought it would be a, a nice way of finishing off the album. He wanted to finish off the album with a 
with a song which was the title track. Uh, so he lifted the words from your beautiful face and he had this other strange sound that sounds like a dark flower opening. Um, but it does mean that lyrically the album signs off with the world's a safer place without your beautiful face, which is quite a bitter way to finish. I had a uh, crack was kicking around. Uh, what I used for crack and what I used for uh, lifting the lid, I'd had uh, around for a while. And also a cat and seven souls. They were off the shelf. Uh, they were things that I'd had for a while and never managed to make them work with anything. Never, didn't manage to make them work with any of the Marillion stuff either. Um, Red Kite was written uh, as a consequence of, of hearing the musical idea. So those words were written for that music. Your Beautiful Face was written just before I heard the music. And um, Only Love Will Make You Free was, li was, was written for the music. The other musicians, yeah, sure. Uh, we we went to uh, we went over to Swindon one day to give Dave Gregory the files because Richard wanted Dave to arrange some strings, and uh, Dave did that. But when he gave us the songs back, he said, "Well, I've arranged some strings, but I've played a bit of guitar as well. Um, but if you don't like it, don't use it, you know. Uh, oh, and I played a bit of bass." But if you don't like it, don't use it. And, and of course, it was all great. Um, so we used all of it, I think. Um, again, we weren't we weren't with Dave when when he played on it and uh, played his guitars and his strings and his bass guitar. So he did that completely alone as well. Um, but I think there's something very liberating about working alone because you, you're unself-conscious. You don't have another human being in your space who, to worry about, you know. You don't have to worry about their opinion or, or just the fact that they're there. Um, you can work alone and you can worry purely and think purely about the music and what it needs. Um, and you can have your little experiments and... If they fail, you can bend them and you, you can try again and, until you have something you think is working really well before anyone ever hears it. And that can be quite a good way of working. Um, we also went down to um, the recording studio and recorded Aaron Amun, um, who used to play with the H band. Um, and also he used to play with an English artist called John Martin, Scottish artist called John Martin. Um, and Chris Maitland, who used to play drums at the Porcupine Tree before Gavin Harrison, he came down and played some drums. And the legendary Danny Thompson, who used to play with Tim Buckley and Talk Talk, Kate Bush, Peter Gabriel, you name it. Uh, he, he came out in Japan. You, he came down and played double bass on Naked. I think that was it. I played some Hammond Dulcimer on, on Naked and that was my sole musical contribution. Uh, Richard, um, I mixed um, Only Love Will Make You Free. I mixed that track with Michael Hunter and Richard um, produced and mixed um, all the other songs. Oh, no. 